Jan was asking me yesterday if I need a microphone. And I often do seminars with my son, uh, Dr. Martin Jr. And he says, Dad, you're the only guy I know that I've got a built-in microphone. In. So I don't need a microphone. Okay, so here's where I'm going to go today. I'm, you're actually going to get a, a preview of my new book, Sun, Steak, and Steel, and Sleep. That's it. Uh, uh, and um, we got a major problem in our society today, and 93% uh, of us have that problem. So I'm going to discuss that today. 93% of us. First time in recorded history that the leading cause of death is not bacteria. It's not COVID, it's not virus, it's not even trauma, it's not war. <clears throat> For the first time in recorded medical history, the leading cause of death is chronic disease. That is a huge, huge paradigm shift. And this statistic is absolutely incredible. 93% of the population have what I'm going to talk about today. It's called metabolic syndrome. Now don't get too uptight about the word metabolic it just means your metabolism <clears throat> and it's it's how your body produces energy that's the short of what your metabolic syndrome is okay so 93 percent have it now you can find out if you have it simply by doing sorry so i'm just trying to call it oh, wow. um You can get blood tests done, and uh, I highly recommend them. Because if you get these blood tests done, you can find out if you have metabolic syndrome. Now, you don't have to get blood tests done because if you if you have high blood pressure, I know, and I'm talking about if you're either on medication and it's controlled, or you have high blood pressure without medication, you have metabolic syndrome. If you have um, normal but high blood sugar, you have metabolic syndrome. If you have elevated levels of uric acid, you have metabolic syndrome. If you have high triglycerides and low HDL, and I'll explain that to you in a, in a few minutes, you have metabolic syndrome. And listen, 93% of the population have metabolic syndrome. Now, metabolic syndrome is a food syndrome, okay? It's caused by food. And the leading causes of death come from metabolic syndrome, okay? So let me, let me just give you a little chart. You think of cardiovascular disease, still the number one killer in our society. Heart attacks, stroke, right? Get older, of course we worry about that heart attack, stroke, but where do they come from? Medicine has taught us over the years that the biggest factor is genetics. You know what? That's not true. It's not true even close to being true. 95% of the, if you have a stroke, or you have a heart attack, or you get cancer, or you get Alzheimer's, or you get diabetes, has nothing to do with genetics. 95% of it is your lifestyle. It comes from lifestyle. And genetics, yeah, like my dad, diabetic. My grandfather was a diabetic. So do I have a tendency or weakness towards diabetes? Yes, of course I do. Uh, you wanna know what my dad looked like? Look at me. <laughs> at his age, I, I look in the mirror sometimes, it scares me how much I look like my father. I mean it, they call me Tony Jr. for a reason. Right? I look exactly like my dad at this age. But I don't have diabetes. It's a lifestyle disorder. And guys, all I'm saying to you is this. I don't care how old you are. You get a brand new body, believe it or not. You get brand new liver. You get a brand new bones. You get brand new, it, 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 you know, within months, you get a brand new stomach. Well, four days for a brand for a stomach. Now, if you don't change what you're doing, 
if you don't change what you're eating, uh, you can't change it. So I, I'm going to challenge you today to take your health seriously. You're here. That means something to me, okay? Like, and I, I don't like to pick on men, but I do a little bit, okay? <laughs> because men would come to my office generally, okay? And like, I was in practice for almost 50 years, uh, private practice. And um, my specialty was more diabetes than anything else. And uh, because I, I could put them into remission. You never cure diabetes, but you put it into remission without medication most of the time. But men would come in and they, I'd say, well, okay, how are you doing? Good. Why are you here? I don't know. Uh, how are you feeling? Good. I had all their blood work. I had all their results. I never saw a patient till I saw their blood work. So I had their A1C. I, I had their uric acid. I had their blood sugar. I had their insulin levels. I had all of it. I go in and men go, ah, there's nothing wrong with me. I said, you're on the Titanic. <laughs> you are in trouble. You already hit the iceberg, right? And they didn't realize that they were part of the 93% of the population that had metabolic syndrome. And some have it worse than others. And so it's a huge problem because Listen, cardiovascular disease, you know, I, I, I love cardiologists, I really do. And they're smart people, they really are, they go through a lot of education. But they don't know anything about food, okay? And they get it wrong. Everything that, that cardiologists have said, now I'm not telling you don't, don't say Dr. Martin said, stop going to my cardiologist. Don't do that. But here's what they got wrong. You know what they got wrong? <laughs> Cholesterol. Now, I'm not even gonna ask you to put your hand up, okay? I'm not asking you to put your hand up. How many people are on statin drugs? The cholesterol-lowering medication. You know what? The number one selling drug of all time is what? It's not aspirin. It's Lipitor. A cholesterol lowering medication, number one selling of all time. Tylenol, Advil, nope, Lipitor. Folks, they're looking for love in all the wrong places because you know what's happened with heart disease? It hasn't even made a dent. Lowering cholesterol, hasn't even made a dent in the statistics. Because, look, this is an overarching principle, and if you understand this, you'll, you'll sort of figure out where we're going. The food industry, two biggest industries in the world are food and the pharmaceutical industry. They're bigger than media, and they're bigger than everything. The food industry, owned by 10 companies, including Kraft and Pepsi-Cola and Coca-Cola and Lever Brothers and a few others. They own 10 companies, own all of, you go to the grocery store, you know how many items in there? 33,000 on average. Go to Publix, 33,000 on average. Owned by 10 companies, okay? And I'm not saying they're bad, but those food companies, listen, they don't care about you. They care about this. It's money. It, you know what happened in the food industry? The tobacco industry moved to the food industry. Yeah. The biggest tobacco company in the world was <coughs> Philip Morris, okay? Now, I'm a Canadian. Philip Morris was Marlboro and a few others, okay? You remember smoking? Everybody smoked when I was a kid. My dad smoked, my mom smoked, everybody smoked. But you know what happened to the tobacco industry, right? It, it, it doesn't mean that people stopped smoking, but they sure got the memo on smoking and smoking went down. I remember I was 10 years old. My dad came home, he was a doctor. He came home and he, he, had, he used to smoke with his patients. 
<laughs> four packs of cigarettes a day. Four packs every day. And he came home one day. I'm not kidding. I can still remember the date in my place, our, our house in, 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 in Canada. He pressed on the waste paper basket and he announced to the family that he was no longer going to smoke anymore because he had read an article that, that smoking caused cancer. I'm not, you know what year it was? 1962. Oh, yeah. And my dad went like this. Whoop. Now, my mom never got the memo. <laughs> and all I was thinking when he was putting those cigarettes in the thing, I was 10 years old. My brothers, my older brothers, I had three older brothers. They were all smokers. And I, I'm going, what am I going to smoke? <laughs> you know, but I remembered my mother had these filtered cigarettes, so I stole hers. But I anyway, uh, I never did smoke anyway, by the way. I, I didn't like it. Uh, so, but all I'm saying, guys, is this food industry, okay, they don't care about your health, okay? And when you have Pop Tarts for breakfast, <laughs> they don't care. You go and look at all this. They said, Dr. Man, it's oatmeal. If I don't go to have my oatmeal, I'm not going to be able to have a poo <laughs> if I don't have my oatmeal. That, my friend, comes from Dr. Kellogg's. And Dr. <laughs> Kellogg's, who was a, net, a medical doctor, he was not a dummy. He invented cereal. Did you know that? Dr. Kellogg's. And he was a real doctor, real mm -hmm. smart, and he believed in being a vegetarian and being a vegan. Back in the back in the turn of the uh, of the uh, the last century, but he wasn't a dummy. But all of dietitians, listen, I, I got a PhD in nutrition, but it, you know my training was all under the same people. The Seventh-day Adventist, he, that's who Dr. Kellogg's was. They had a religious thing about don't eat meat and, you know, from the Bible, and they were wrong, but they, they did it, and they, 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 they started the dietitian. Today, if you get a dietitian, they've been trained originally by the Seventh-day Adventist. I'm not telling you they're no good. I'm just telling you that... They don't believe in uh, eggs, or meat, or cheese, and uh, I got trained that way. I, I was trained under that. You couldn't get a nutritional degree unless you were taught that cholesterol was bad. But uh, I, I never bought it because my dad was a doctor. And my dad came home in 1968. I was 16. And my dad said, I'm a diabetic. And I didn't even know what, he, what that meant. <laughs> I knew my grandfather died of it. <clears throat> and I loved my dad. So I was worried about him. But the next morning, my dad, the next morning. Okay? I mean it. In 1968, when the only time you ran in 1968 was the police were chasing you. <laughs> because my dad got up and he was doing this in our living room in northern Ontario. And my mother came downstairs and she said, what the heck are you doing? He said, I'm getting into shape. I'm a diabetic. And he was doing that. I said, Dad, are you crazy? Why are you doing that? There was no such thing as jogging in 1968, but my dad invented it. I <laughs> and, uh, but you know what? My mother, my dad said, in 1968, listen to what he said. I'm a diabetic. I can, you see, you know what they called diabetes in 1968? You guys know this? What was it called? Sugar diabetes. Sugar diabetes. Oh. Right? They don't call it anymore. Now it's type one or type two. And they even have type three. I'll talk to you about that today. They changed names. Where do you think that came from? That came from the food industry. They didn't want you to stop eating sugar. It's in all of their cereals. 
So you think they're stupid? They're not stupid, but they don't care about you. So what did they do? My dad was smart. My dad said, I have Tony Jr. Listen to me. I have sugar diabetes. Okay, dad. What's that mean? I can't have sugar. Oh, yeah. Why, dad, how are you going to eat? <laughs> Six days a week. Listen to my father. Steak out of my house. My dad came home late from the office. Oh, we saw his patients, never home before 6.30, 7 o'clock at night. We ate. My mother would make my dad a steak every night, six nights a week, and roast beef on Sunday <laughs> with the fat. So I'm, not, I'm serious. So I go to school, right? I go undergraduate, graduate work, postgraduate work, and I'm hearing moderation. That's nutrition. That's you want to be a guru in nu nutrition, mainstream, moderation. You need carbs. If you don't get carbs, your brain's not going to work. I was taught that. Okay. But all I can think of is my dad. And my dad said, oh, no sugar, none, nada. A few fruits, God's candy, as they call it. You can have a few of them. But you can't get rid of diabetes unless, okay, so I'm just showing you where I come from. If you're in this room today and you're in the 93%, you have diabetes. What? I don't have diabetes. You really do. But you have not been diagnosed because you're waiting for your blood sugar. The last thing that's going to happen to you, the last thing, your body is so unbelievable. It will, you have an organ dedicated inside your body. It's called your pancreas. Okay? You know what it's dedicated to do? To keep you away from diabetes. Diabetes is high blood sugar, right? So you have a, your body is 100%. It will not allow, your body is so smart. Do you know what? If I was to take your, Jan was to eat 20 donuts. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. But if Jan, this is a fact, guys. And this is a fact for all of you. If I gave you 20 donuts right now, and you ate 20 donuts, your blood sugar would go through the roof. But within a couple of hours, I could take your blood sugar and it would be back to a normal pretty well normal range uh, unless you're a severe diabetic okay that's a fact okay and I'll show you a chart in a minute but <clears throat> your body knows sugar is so toxic it's dedicated to keep sugar out of your blood vessels so if you don't get that memo I, I don't know what to tell you your body says no sugar to be left in your bloodstream. If I was to take your five liters, okay, American, sorry, that's about how many gallons? I don't know, okay? You got five liters of blood, that's how I got taught. I empty that, I empty your blood today. Right now, you might have just had lunch. I don't care who you are, you will have less than a teaspoon of sugar left in your bloodstream even if you had 20 donuts. You know that? Because sugar is so toxic, it will start to destroy your blood vessels within minutes. So listen, think about how important this stat is. And this don't come from me, this is the World Health Organization. 93% of the population in North America have metabolic syndrome. That means you have an allergy. <clears throat> True story. Lady comes into my office uh, years ago and uh, she had allergies. I said, well, I already saw her blood work. So I said, you got allergies. And she's sneezing, coughing, barking, watery eyes behind me. I, I didn't look at her. I was looking at her blood work. And I said, I turned around and said, you got allergies. Yeah, Dr. Martin, that's why I'm here. I said, well, 
okay, yeah, because I said your mast cells are way up, you're, you're releasing histamine like crazy. Um, I said, what are you allergic to? He said, my cat. <laughs> She said, well, get rid of it. <laughs> she said, I can. I said, well, that I can't help you. <laughs> Folks, if you're in 93%, you got an allergy to carbohydrates that turn to sugar. Bread, pasta, rice, cereals, sugar, sweets, pastries, juice, orange juice. You might as well have a Pepsi. Your body doesn't know the difference. Did you know that? Your body doesn't know the difference between a can of Pepsi and Dr. Martin, it's Tropicana. I don't care. -a. It don't matter. -a. It don't. Because as far as your body is concerned, it's how much sugar is in there and how fast it's going to turn to sugar. So you have an allergy to sugar. Carbs turn to sugar. I don't care. Dr. Martin's whole wheat bread. Who cares? It don't matter. In five seconds, whole wheat bread is going to turn to sugar in your bloodstream. And then your pancreas is going to secrete an enormous amount of insulin to take that sugar Okay, out, 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 out. Got to get out. You can't stay in the bloodstream. You can't park there. No parking. You can't. You're going to destroy blood vessels. Come here. Out, 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 out. And how it develops metabolic syndrome is very simple. Fat don't make you fat. Well, I was taught that in school. Fat makes me fat. I'll come back to cardiologists in a minute. <laughs> You look at a piece of steak, you look at an egg, and uh, there's a lot of fat in there. When you buy steak, get the best, get more fat, the better it is for you. Oh, there's fat don't make you fat. And fat don't give you cholesterol. And cholesterol doesn't give you heart disease. It doesn't. If it did, we would have cured it by now. See, it, it's sugar. That's the 93%. It's what we're eating. And when the food industry and the tobacco industry took it over, just remember that. It started with the tobacco industry. They took over almost all of it. From craft to whatever. They bought them all. And they used their addictive... They knew what... Nick, you remember, you've seen the movies, right? And if you haven't, you don't remember, some of us are old enough to remember when actually people, uh, did they go to jail? I can't remember if they went to jail, but they sure got fined because they got found out that they knew cigarettes were addictive and they hit it. You know what the food industry knows now? That sugar, like cocaine, takes a shot in your brain and the same route that cocaine does and it goes to the reward center in your brain and they know it. And so what? Well, folks, they develop to the point of 93% of the population. Now, what did they say was the second biggest industry? Pharmaceutical. Now, again, please don't misquote me. The pharmaceutical industry has done some wonderful things. Okay, including antibiotics, which have saved millions and millions of people's lives, and even metformin, which is a which is a, a medication for uh, high high blood sugar, right? For for diabetes. Look, I'm not against that stuff. I'm not. But, but the food industry who do not care about your health makes patience for the pharmaceutical industry who do not know anything about food. <laughs> See, that's the dilemma we're in today in our society. And that's why I spend my life educating people 
I spend my life, now I do a podcast every day and whatever. My son, I had a radio show in Canada for a year, a syndicated radio show. And my, my son came to me one day, Dad, we're going podcasting. I said, what? What's a podcast? I didn't even know what he was talking about. <laughs> but my passion in life is to educate people to what's happening behind the scenes in their uh, life. And if you end, you get that big picture and you understand that you name any disorder chronic from heart disease, it's, it's not solid. Okay, there was an article today. My wife sends me uh, an article uh, in Canada. Salt, big problem. You know what? Eliminate all your salt. Will that get rid of high blood pressure? Not even for a second. It never has and never will. Cause they're looking for love in all the wrong place. Not salt, it's sugar. Salt never hurts you. You cry salt. Your saliva is salt. There's salt in your blood. There's salt everywhere. Call me salty. Good. You want to be salty. It's not salt, my friend. It's sugar that destroys. Your body understands that. Dedicated to get sugar out of your bloodstream. Because what happens... Okay, let's follow a piece of bread just for a second, okay? You just had bread. Doctor, my whole week. It turned to sugar rapidly. <clears throat> Insulin said, hey, you, out, come here. So now it's sugar, right? If there was a little bit of protein in it, okay. Insulin, don't care about that too much. Uh, if you had a little bit of fat in your bread, they don't care about that either. But sugar can't stay. Remember that. Just remember, it can't stay there. Come here, out. So it brings it, you know where it goes? <coughs> Where does sugar go? To your liver. Your liver. What does it do there? What happens in your liver? It's not Vegas. Well, you know what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas? <laughs> what happens in your liver is very important metabolically because sugar turns to fat in your liver. And when your liver get, I'm on the wrong side. When your liver gets full, of fat, it sends the extra fat into your bloodstream as triglycerides. Tri, three fat balls. You know what clogs your arteries? Fat balls. Yeah, three of them. They're called triglycerides. When's the last time your doctor talked to you about triglycerides? Now he talked to you about your cholesterol. Ah, I got high cholesterol. Good. You want to live longer? Have high cholesterol. The higher your cholesterol, the longer you're going to live. Unless God picked you up. No, I'm serious. There's no such thing as bad cholesterol. It's a hoax. You can't live without cholesterol. You can. Every cell in your body has cholesterol. Do you know that, ladies, your hormones don't work without cholesterol. Your thyroid can't work without cholesterol. Your ovaries can't work without cholesterol. Cholesterol is a, is a foundational... God. I, here's what I say about cholesterol. God don't trust you. God makes 85% and 15% comes out of your liver. So even if you if you're a vegetarian, okay, never have you live on salad, you're still gonna make cholesterol. <clears throat> now you won't make the amount that you need because you're supposed it's like the federal government tax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you make fifteen percent. Your liver makes eighty five percent. Did you know that? You can't live without cholesterol. If someone calls you fat head, take it as a compliment. <laughs> you want to have no fat in your liver, but you want to have fat in your brain because your brain don't work without fat. And so we went, what? Fat free. Why did they do that? Why? Because fat makes you fat. No, it doesn't. Guys, come with me. We're going to the beach in Hollywood today or wherever we are. Fort Lauderdale. Okay? 
Look at the size of people today. You've got to be my age to realize the world's changed. Go to the mall. Look at the size of people today. Why is that? Because we're eating uh, too much fat? No, we're eating too much sugar. And it gets stored as fat. And as soon as your liver is full, triglycerides go up. But then your body says, okay, I have to do something. I must store. So what it does, it makes more fat cells and some people have an unlimited ability to make fat cells but if you don't understand nutrition you're going to blame the wrong things and look i'm not telling you to you'll never hear me tell a person to get off medication i won't do it i'm not in private practice anymore i used to do it if they were under my care and I send a little note to their physician. I'm going to take them off metformin. We're going to met, uh, we're going to monitor their blood work. I'm going to take them off a statin drug. We're going to monitor their blood work. We're going to look at their triglycerides. We're going to look at their HDL. We're going to look at all those things. And uh, if they come down, we'll 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 fix them. Well, let me show you something. Now, I flunked art. <laughs> but this is a chart of blood sugar. That's 20, okay? And um, this is ours. I'm going to show you something. When you eat a piece of bread, okay, your blood sugar will go up to 20 within nanoseconds. Because remember what's happening, right? You're, the bread's turning to sugar rapidly. Oatmeal, 25. It's worse than bread. Okay? It'll go right up here. But that's all right. Your body's dedicated to get that down. So what happens, what you, do, what you see here is you see this, okay? That's the first line of blood sugar. This is the line of your insulin. Okay, remember, insulin... Your pancreas is this big. You know where that's found? Just underneath your stomach. So it's right here. Okay. Now it does other things, but the main thing it does is it releases insulin. Okay. What's insulin do? Insulin is only released when you eat. You don't eat. You don't need insulin. There's no other reason for insulin other than food. And so what happens? You have a piece of bread. That's your blood sugar. But insulin is secreted at the same time and it takes your blood sugar down. But look what happens to insulin. Up, 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 up. And only by about the fourth, uh, third hour it's down, it's still elevated after six hours. You know why? It's storing. It's storing, it's storing fat. You, have, you insist on eating sugar, your body's going to have to turn that to fat. Primarily in the liver, uh, fat balls in your bloodstream, very dangerous. It's very dangerous. You, you, you get a stroke, you know when somebody says, oh doc, my carotid arteries, you know, I, I had a scan here. Yeah, but don't worry about, if you blame cholesterol, you're blaming the police because they're at the crime scene. They're not the bad guy. You're blaming the firemen because they're at a fire. Of course they're at a fire. Cholesterol's always going through your blood. Why is it going through your blood? It's FedEx. It's Canada Post. It's US Post. It's Amazon. They're on the highways of your bloodstream. You know what they're looking for? Triglycerides. So they can hitch their wagon and say, come here, come on back to the liver. If you stay in the bloodstream, you're gonna cause a heart attack or stroke. See how smart your body is? And what do we do? We insist on lowering our cholesterol. We insist on it. Because the food industry don't want you off sugar. And the pharmaceutical industry, God bless them, but they sell Lipitor and Crestor and Zocor and any other ore you can think of. 
and they make gazillions. And I'm not saying there's not good people there, there's good people. But they convince themselves that if I can just lower your cholesterol, I'm going to help you. Don't help a bit, folks. I'm sorry. You've been duped. That is the biggest hoax in medicine, is the cholesterol hoax. Because you only have to take biology to understand what cholesterol is. You can't live without it. And when your brain is full of cholesterol, you ain't getting Alzheimer's. You know how you get Alzheimer's? You know what Alzheimer's is? It's type 3 diabetes. Discovered in 2005. It's type 3 diabetes. If you have a relative, a friend, or whatever that has Alzheimer's or dementia, they have type 3 diabetes. Now, medicine, medicine changed it. They discovered it. it was big. I was doing radio at that time. I remember doing show, talk show after talk show. Type 3 diabetes, Alzheimer's. Number one, number one killer in our society today is heart disease. Number two is cancer. And number three is Alzheimer's. You know what in the United Kingdom? You know what the leading cause of death in the United Kingdom is? Alzheimer's. It's number one. It's sugar. It's an allergy. And you don't get along with sugar. Don't fool yourself. I don't care. You could be as skinny as a rape. And I take a I take an ultrasound of your liver and I take blood work and I look at your liver enzymes and your enzymes are up. You are on the Titanic and you are going to have a heart attack or a stroke or you are going to have Alzheimer's or you're going to uh, be a diabetic. And the last thing that happens is diabetes. It's the last thing. So someone that's a diabetic, you're a diabetic already. That was the last thing. You had diabetes 20 years before you were diagnosed. At least 20 years. Because they waited for your blood sugar. Look what happens. You have to understand how food works. Blood sugar here. And if it stays up here, it's because your pancreas is not working anymore. And, and met, what metformin does, yeah, it controls your blood sugar, yeah, but you're, 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 re, you're rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. <laughs> you didn't change course. You're in trouble. Diabetes will end terribly for you. I'm not a prophet, nor the son of one. But I told my diabetic patients this. If you don't get this memo, you're gonna lose your limbs. Guarantee your eyes, guarantee. You're gonna lose your kidneys, and you're gonna either that or have a heart attack or a stroke, or cancer. That is diabetes at the end. And you know why? I saw it for 50 years. Just about, I saw it. Hey, doc, I didn't get the memo. I can't go home with you. I can't. Go home with you. He used to tell my patients, I'm going to give you a 30-day program, sun, steak, and steel, to change your life. I will give you a program that is based on food. You'll never be hungry. And uh, you, uh, I didn't show you this, but okay, this is uh, bread. Okay, that's what bread, ha that's what happens to bread how much insulin you need. This here, do you see this line here? That's steak. You know how much insulin you need for steak? You know what 93% is? It's insulin. Sugar elevates your insulin and your cells eventually go, I'm so tired of insulin coming around. You ever had a bad neighbor? They come to your house all the time? You ever, you ever experienced that? You say, you know, I wish they'd stay home. But you see, folks, if you eat carbs and you insist on them, your body will develop insulin resistance. And now, but insulin, I don't care. It doesn't matter. If you eat bread, 
insulin, even though, even though your body is saying, would you stop with the insulin? Well, secrete it, secrete it, secrete it, secrete it until it takes your blood sugar down to within normal ranges. That's how your body operates. And um, cancer is not genetics. Did you hear me? I can show you a picture on my phone of my cousin. He's my first cousin. He's my dad's sister's son. He has a wing named after him in research at uh, Harvard. Do you think he's smart? He's one of the smartest guys I've ever met. He has studied breast cancer <coughs> and is a top guy, and he's still working. Of course, professors never stop because they're tenured and they make you know, three or four hundred thousand bucks a year for doing nothing. That's what I tell my cousin. But anyway, no. But what I'm saying is, all of these years, I said, you know, Mark, what are you doing? You know, what 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 advancements have you made in breast cancer? Uh, you know, I already know the answer because one out of seven women in this room are gonna get breast cancer. And maybe some of you already have had it. You know, when I was in school in the 70s, one out of 20 women in North America got breast cancer. So here's my cousin, and God love him, and he's smart. All these years, they're looking for love in the wrong place because they're looking at genetics. They're trying to get me to stop. I won't do it. <laughs> um, so what I'm saying is cancer is not a genetic disease. Cancer is a metabolic disease. Because cancer cannot survive without sugar. Did you know that? You see, cancer, cancer cells are 20 to 30 times more receptive to sugar than any other cell is. A cancer cell is like a teenager that loves sugar, right? You got teenagers, you know what I mean? Grandchildren that are teenagers, okay? They, they sugar don't seem to bother them. Uh, we get, we're grandparents. We give them sugar and send them home. Let their kids, their parents send them. We try this. But, no, but cancer is a metabolic disease, my friend. Look, it's not genetics. I don't care if your dad had prostate cancer. It, it, yeah, it may me make you a little bit more susceptible, but it doesn't cause cancer. Cancer needs to be fed. And it only lives on sugar and foods that become sugar rapidly. That's it, my friend. Now, you're not going to hear it. Why did, you know, like Gary said, it's going to be controversial. I'm sorry if I've offended you, but I'm not because I'm telling you the truth about nutrition and cancer cells. I, I, I True story. Oncologist in my hometown, nice lady, smart. I, she's mad at me. She calls me. My secretary comes and gets me. I got patient, but it's Doctor So and So, and she's. I knew who she was. I said, Oh, God, I, I go out and she, Doctor Martin, and I'm just so upset with you because you know you told the patient to do this and that. I said, Wait a minute, Doc. I sent her to you. Because I, long story short, I suspected that she had breast cancer from the imaging that I used to do in my office. I, uh, you know, I said, go get that check. But then the doc said, when she told me, my patient telling me that you, that sugar is bad for cancer. I said, she's an oncologist. She said, I never heard that. I said, doc, do you know what a PET scan is? She said, yeah, we just got one. How does it work? I don't know. I said, well, they give you sugar. They give you a cup of sugar. The, the scanning doesn't work unless you take glucose. I said, then you, if you have cancer, I don't care if it's in your breast or in your toes. Sugar will go right to that and you take a PET scan and you light up like a Christmas tree. That's how PET scans work. 
Did you know that? They don't work without glucose. <clears throat> I said, well, hello to the oncologist. I said, doc, if PET scans need sugar to diagnose, why? Because cancer sets cells feed on it. Not salt. Not fat. Not steak. <clears throat> not eggs. Not cheese. But bread. And noodles. And the juice. When I see those kids, my, my grandchildren worked at, three or four of them worked at Starbucks, you know, part time job for school. And uh, they said, they're barista. And they said, Grandpa, if you saw the amount of sugar that we put in those drinks. Mm. I said, my kids love coffee. I love coffee. Okay? That's vitamin C. You know what the best drink in the world is? Water. Yeah. Close second, right there, coffee. Yeah. And I've been saying that for 50 years. And you know what? It is more powerful than vitamin C. It's coffee. So I think, you know, look at all these kids. They're smart. They're going to drink coffee. No, they're going to drink sugar is what they're doing. The worst thing you can do is drink sugar. Think of a fruit, okay? God wanted you to eat fruit, not drink it. You're to eat it. And you can have fruit. Limit. And the reason I limit it is because we live in a different world today. We don't live in the same world that my parents lived in. And uh, do you know that the average, okay, this is a statistic. And sometimes I like to write stuff out because if I do, you'll remember. I learned that in school. Okay. 1950 and 1952 was a great year. I was born then. <laughs> North Americans consume 25 pounds of sugar a year. Wow. My kids were all born in the 70s, four of them. And uh, we were up to 50 <clears throat> pounds a year of sugar. And my grandchildren already born. Now I'm into great-grandchildren. And my great-grandchildren are doing this. Wow. They're up to 200 pounds of sugar a year. That's the food industry. <clears throat> Go, I've done shows, when I had radio shows, and I had a TV show too. When I did TV, I would go into a grocery store and a uh, camera followed me and I said, okay, let's read labels. I used to get my patients to read a label because then they, you know, I said, educate yourself, you know, don't, uh, just because it says whole wheat don't mean nothing. Find out how many grams of carbs and how many grams of sugar is there. And I said, you're going to find out that 90% of the food, unless you're on the outside of the grocery store, right, in the produce and that, you're in trouble because we live in a different world. And that's why I, I even limit my patients, especially with cancer, uh, with fruit. 200 pounds of sugar, you know what? Your body was never made for that. And your insulin goes <clears throat> crazy. And you develop insulin resistance, which develops inflammation, okay? And inflammation starts, inflammation, if you kick me in the knee, that's normal. I'm gonna do this, and my body is gonna send extra blood and enzymes and whatever, healing, right? Think of an ambulance. Your body has an ambulance system. You hurt yourself. Trauma, right? You rub. And you that's smart. Rub. It's actually good. You bring in more blood. Problem is, what if what if inflammation doesn't go away? Insulin creates inflammation. And inflammation will destroy your blood vessels. That's what creates plaque. And then the triglycerides come through and they get caught in your blood vessels. So when you look at plaque in a blood vessel, okay, and you know, you see that's damaged the blood vessel, right? 
You might have no symptoms at all. You have no idea. There are people in this room that could have 90 something percent blockage and your blood pressure might not even be up this after. But you have a 90 percent blockage in your coronary artery and you don't even know it. But if you do your blood work and you do it right and you look at the numbers, it'll tell you where you're, you're at. You get your, I'm going to mention eight things, but get these done. If you have notes, uh, here's what you get done. And if you're not sure what they mean, you, I am going to leave you after, I'll leave you my uh, email or um, my website that you can actually send your blood work to and I will analyze it for you. I'll tell you whether you're on the Titanic or not, okay? And uh, I use the illustration of the Titanic, but uh, so here's what you want to do. Get your blood work done. The most important, I think, the most important thing is, ah, it's close, okay? So let me just say this, A1C. You want your A1C. You know what A1C is? Yeah. That's a measurement of your blood glucose over a three month period, okay? You don't have to wait for three months. They have the ability to uh, uh, test you immediately with your A1C. Get your A1C done. Very important. Because if it's over 5.4 or up, you're on the Titanic. <laughs> Simple as that. Okay, you're in trouble. And uh, really, new research comes out for your brain for <coughs> Alzheimer's. Remember what Alzheimer's is. It's type three diabetes. How do you measure diabetes? How do you really measure insulin? More than even insulin. I don't care. If you send me your insulin, I, I'll look at it. But what I'm looking at is A1C because A1C is gonna tell me if you have insulin resistance or not. If your cells are going, I hate you, insulin. You come around all the time. That's A1C. I love A1C. Doctors don't, they, they're looking at diabetes. A1C is not for diabetes. A1C is to tell you if, you if you're on the broad road that leads to destruction, you gotta get off. You gotta turn this ship around in 30 days. I don't care if you're at 6.9. That means you already hit the iceberg. You can turn your A1C in 30 days. You can get it below that. 30 days. You know what you eat? Eggs, meat, and cheese. Now, please, somebody just, we were talking about before. Atkins. Who's heard of Atkins? Put your hand up. Everybody's heard of Atkins. He's a cardi he was a cardiologist. Was he stupid? No, he was very smart. You know what Atkins found out? He, he, he read German <coughs> World War II studies on insulin. They did some bad things, the Germans, right? Okay. But they recorded everything. And one thing they used to do is look for uh, uh, blood sugar and Atkins read the research and he said if I can get people's blood sugar down and get their insulin down I can he's a cardiologist I can lower their blood pressure it's complicated but it works through the kidneys and that's what Atkins was all about it wasn't a dummy and he didn't die because he was eating eggs, meat, and cheese. He fell, he slipped on ice at 72 years old and uh, fell in New York, coming out of his cardiology clinic, hit his head, never regained consciousness. You know, they tell me today, you know how many people call me? Uh, Dr. Martin, that's Atkins, you're like Atkins, you're a dummy, and he died from uh, cholesterol. No, he had an accident and die. Okay? A1C. Get your A1C. Here's what you want. Get your TGs done. Triglycerides. Those are your three fat balls. If, and this is important, you put these two together. HDL. Dr. Martin, 
My LDL has gone down. Who cares? What does it mean? You want to die young? Lower your LDL. That's what Lipitor does. That's what Crestor does. Who cares? What does it do? It destroys your immune system. You need cholesterol even for your immune system to work. But you find out with your triglycerides and HDL. Now, triglycerides should be this. And HDL should be that. What's HDL? High density lipoprotein. That's cholesterol. <coughs> That's the one I'm interested in. Because these two guys go together. It triglyceride, remember? They're in your blood. Why? How did they get to your blood? <coughs> Follow me for a second. I'm testing you. How did triglycerides liver? Liver. What was wrong with your liver? Too much? Sugar. From too much? Sugar. In an afternoon, I'm giving you a PhD. You know more than 99% of every doctor I've ever met. Sugar in your liver turns to fat, and fat sends it into bloodstream as triglycerides. And if your cholesterol is too low, you don't have enough wagons to go and hitch on to these guys to take them back to the liver for processing. That's what your body does. You have to help it. Eat the right foods, okay? So triglycerides are low and you want your cholesterol to be high. Got it? This should be at least one to one ratio. I like it two or even three to one ratio. Meaning that in the United States, if your triglycerides are 65, for example, okay, um, in, the, in Canada it's 1.65, but in, in, in the United States at 65, you want to be at least 65 for this. But even better if you're into the 100s. The higher your cholesterol is, the more wagons you have in your bloodstream to hitch their wagon to your triglycerides to bring them back to the liver for processing. It's exactly how your body works. So remember that, okay? That's why these blood tests are important. Dr. Martin, my total cholesterol. I don't wanna know. <coughs> I don't wanna know. You can't make me interested in it. It doesn't matter to me. I, I, I mean, I get people, they come on, they, you know, I love them. They're my patients. I, I care for them. I enjoy them. I love them. I said, you can't make me care. I don't care. A lady, when she's arguing with me, all week she argued with me. She sent me her blood work six different ways. Because she said, but my doctor. I said, I know, but what do I want? You can't make me care. Because your doctor cares about your cholesterol. I can't care about it. Unless it's high. Unless it's high. If it's high, I'm giving you high five. <laughs> it's exact opposite what they teach in medical school. Four, okay? This is, this is triglycerides, and you could do your blood sugar, uh, but this is the best, okay? Here's, a, here's one too, uric acid. Now, what, what, is, what do you guys think of when you see that name? Gout. Gout. Yeah, but this is, this is high <laughs> uric acid without gout. Okay. Now, if you have gout, you got high uric acid levels. But this really is so important because this tells me how your kidneys are operating. Okay? And kidney function, this will give you high blood pressure more than anything else. Salt won't give you high blood pressure. Uric acid will. And people don't look at it because if you don't have gout, doctors are not interested, right? They're interested in gout. But I'm not interested in gout. Gout is pain, it's no fun. But I'm interested in the function of your kidneys because that's gonna control your blood sugar. Um, your, um, it's gonna co control your blood pressure. <clears throat> blood pressure problems come from uh, your kidneys. You're fine. Okay? So it's really important. Okay, so those, those are my big ones. Um, what else do I like? Uh, yeah, yeah, I love B12. Uh, thank you. 
And uh, these are biomarkers, vitamin D. Get your vitamin D status. Now you Floridians, listen to me. You've been lied to, okay? My book is called Sun, Steak, and Steel. Now listen. I always tell people, you don't get heaven if you live in heaven, okay? Canadians, we get heaven after this life. You don't, because you had heaven. <laughs> Both sides, okay? you, you don't want to go to my hometown today. We got, uh, I think, about uh, a new uh, 13 to 14 inches of snow, okay, in my hometown, okay? So, Floridians, you got your heaven here. Enjoy it, okay? You don't get an afterlife. But um, if I, I, I could spend an afternoon, and I mean it, with you, teaching you about vitamin D. And um, if your vitamin D levels are above, in the United States, if they're above 60, okay? If their number is above 60, the only way you're gonna die is if you get hit by a bus. You know what they found out in COVID? And I, I hate to be, I don't want to even go there. Because it makes me so angry. If you knew what vitamin D could have done for yes. the population, yes. especially seniors, you have no idea. You should see the research coming out now. And in Canada, there is a war on vitamin D. Because, remember the big boys, mm -hmm. food industry and the pharmaceutical industry. Again, don't misquote, they hate vitamin D. And if you go in the sun for 20 minutes, go in the sun for 20 minutes, put your shorts on and short sleeves, you're going to get 10,000 IUs of vitamin D. There is nothing, as a, as a prophylactic, there is nothing better therapeutically in the world for cancer, therapeutically I'm saying, heart disease, viruses, and bacteria than vitamin D. Yeah. Nothing. It is the most incredible vitamin in the world. And people today admit true or false. What are they, what, it, what Dr. Martin, if I go in the sun, Floridians are the worst for this. Sunscreen. Skin, skin cancer, aren't you? Worried about that. You know what melanoma is? There's three types of skin cancer. There's basal cell, there's squamous cell, and there's uh, melanoma. Melanoma can kill you. You know what it is? If you don't get sun. Melanoma is a lack of sun is it's a lack of vitamin d cancer did you know that yeah. melanoma is a metabolic yeah. disease it's it, 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 and squamous yeah if you have a basal cell carcinoma i'm not saying it's good for you but it won't kill you it won't kill you and people have stayed out of the sun or put sunscreen on you know what i learned in chemistry here's what i learned in chemistry Okay. I'm a, I, I got a, an undergraduate degree in biochemistry, but I learned this in high school chemistry. Don't put heat with unknown chemicals uh, and don't heat it up. Because I just about blew up a lab. In, I mean a true story in when I was in high school. Because I was fooling around. I, I majored in recess in school okay, when I was a kid. And I majored in having fun. I was the jokester. People loved to be around me. The, the, the <coughs> chemistry teacher turned his head. I thought, put this in there, put that in. And turn on the buttons and oh, yes. kaboom! Don't put chemical on your skin and then add heat. That's why we have so much cancer today. Sunscreen. You know they just pulled over 50 sunscreens the FDA, it only took them 50 years, but they pulled Johnson & Johnson, Banana Boat, you name it, whoop, cancer producing. I've been saying it for 50 years. Incredible. Yes, sir, you want to ask me a question about sunscreen? It's a little bit opposite. Uh, there was a study done in Australia. The lowest incidence of melanoma were among lifeguards. 100%. Get in the sun. Don't burn. Get in the sun. Yep. Us Canadians, we die to come to Florida. Okay? 
snowbirds on, you know, I mean, we all, my, my son's laughing. He lives in Florida now, okay? He said, Dad, oh, Dave, unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, but I said, the, some of the worst people in the population have the lowest levels of vitamin D happen to be in Florida and Arizona because senior citizens, my generation and my father's generation, the worst. Johnson and Johnson said, sun's bad, sun's bad, yeah. sun's bad, sun's bad, sun. Say a lie long enough, people believe it. And how many people do you know? Oh, the sun. <gasps> I'm going to get wrinkled. And I'm going to get cancer. And they stay out of the sun. And you know who the worst are? The African American. Because the darker your skin, the more sun you need and the more vitamin D. Not just a fact. And that's why, that's why African Americans have got the highest levels of diabetes because a direct result of not only their diet, but their lack of vitamin D. They are extremely low in vitamin D. Anybody ever told you that? No. No. Folks, so get your blood work done. Find out if you're on the Titan. <clears throat> Take a 30 day program. Eggs, meat, and cheese. Oh, Mine, are you high? Can I? How many eggs can I eat? <coughs> I don't care. It doesn't matter. Because if you look at this chart, just remember this chart right here. Okay? Remember this one. When you have an egg, nothing happens. You have cheese, nothing happens with insulin. Nothing happens with your blood sugar either. Steak, vitamin S. Nothing happens. Okay? So what do you do? 30 days, no carbs. I'm not saying forever. I'm saying 30 days. Give me 30 days of your life. Trust me for 30 days. That's what I used to tell my patients. I said, here's your blood work. And the men, I used to have to grab them a little harder. Women are smarter. Men, <laughs> you know what? Uh, you're in trouble. And I can't go home with you. Trust me, 30 days, I'm gonna change your blood work. What can I eat, doc? I said, you like bacon? Oh, I love bacon. I said, have as much as you want. What? Bacon? What do you mean? That's fat. Yeah, but fat don't make it fat. Fat don't give you fat fat. Cholesterol, you need cholesterol. Cholesterol, by, by the way, cholesterol. You're 15%. You have to get it from food. And there's no cholesterol in the plant kingdom. Only in the animal kingdom. <clears throat> Eggs, meat, and cheese. Dairy. Now don't go buy grocery store milk. That's white Pepsi. <laughs> you know how, you see the food industry? Let me remind you. What is milk? <clears throat> Think of it today. Go to the grocery store. What will you see? The size of your brain. 2%. Easy. Okay? No. In the 1950s, in my hometown, the milkman. Now, again, you have to be around my age. We actually had a milkman come to our home riding horses in Northern Ontario. <coughs> Louis the milkman come by and he had the wagon with all the milk. And he would deliver the milk to our house, and you had to take that milk and do this. Yeah. Yeah. Why? It was all cream. That's what comes out of the cow. Skim milk is not from the cow. It's not. That's man made. It's full of sugar. You might as well have a Pepsi. Don't give your kids, don't drink skim milk. Well, yeah, but dog, it's no fat. Yeah, but fat don't make you fat. <clears throat> fat doesn't give you heart disease. Fat won't give you cancer. Fat won't give you Alzheimer's. As a matter of fact, it will stop Alzheimer's. Get fat up in your head. Got it? Okay, so 30 days, eggs, meat, and cheese. Bacon, by the way, you know what makes bacon so good for you? Oleic acid. Okay? What's oleic acid? The same oil that's in olive oil. 
Everybody married or not, they're mad. The reason I say it, they used to phone in in my radio show. Not, they're mad. What about all of oil? I said, I love all of oil. So good for you. It's got all oleic acid. Oh, that's what I thought. The Mediterranean diet. Yes, I said. But you know what has the same oil? I know. Bacon. So I like bacon better than olive oil. <laughs> bacon is better for you because it, it, it's got oleic acid, but it's got lots of protein. And it's got very healthy fat. So when you see that grease, okay? You see that grease that you make in the pan when you cook bacon? That's going to lubricate your blood vessels. It's going to make your blood vessels nice and slippery. Sugar makes them sticky. You see? That's how your body works. Sugar makes them sticky. And oil makes them slip. That's what you want in your blood vessel. The more fat you eat. Listen, 1928. Dr. Stephenson. You can actually Google this. He went up, was studying the Inuit. We used to call them Eskimos until we got wool. You tell me now, I can't use that term anymore. You can't say Eskimo, you must say Inuit. Okay, Inuit. He went up, he studied, he, he studied them for a year, and then in the second year, he was, they were supposed to come and rescue him, but you know, Winter came in early in the Arctic, climate change, and uh, um, he, he got stuck. So he did an experiment, he ate only what they ate for a year, and he said this, okay, you can Google it. I have never felt better in my life, and I've never seen such a healthy population. Do you know that Eskimos, when they chase seals, they never die of a heart attack. They don't even know what that is. I do a lot of work with, uh, uh, well, some Inuit, but mostly uh, I did a lot of work with uh, the, the uh, First Nations. In Canada, we call them the indigenous people, okay? They're all diabetic. Indigenous is 80, 90% diabetic. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, of course, being my specialty, I, I did a lot of work with them over the years. And I used to tell them, I said, look, White man, me, and they liked me because I made them laugh. I said, white man, we kill you, uh, <laughs> Indian, okay? I, yeah, we kill you. We take your land, first of all, and they go, yeah, 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 you took our land. And then I said, then we kill you because we make you eat our food. And if you don't eat McDonald's, you're never going to get sick. You'll never get diabetes. But because you like McDonald's and you like sugar the way they do, and they really do, uh, they get sick. And I said, you're all diabetic. You know what? What man? You're eating our food. Go back and eat the moose and the deer and the ducks and the fish and what the way you used to eat. And I said, go back and do that and you won't need the white man no more. <laughs> that was me. That was my seminars to the indigenous people. They loved me. They got me back. I was funny. They liked me. But I said, no, you're dying, man. You're dying. Because you're eating the way we eat. Don't eat the way we eat. Go and eat the way the Inuit do. They eat blubber all day long. You know when they see a piece of meat, the uh, Inuit? They, they told me this. You see the meat? They give back to their dogs. They eat the fat. They eat the organs. Uh, so, and they're the healthiest people in the world. Did you know that? The Arctic people are the healthiest people in the world. And uh, Dr. Stephenson, who was a researcher, showed that in 1928. You know what happened? Dr. Kellogg's got a hold of it, and they hid that research. We try to eat fairly healthy, but every evening we have two glasses of wine. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> well, <laughs> listen. I'm not, I, uh, we used to have a weight loss clinic. I, I, it, it was a separate in a way. It was my weight loss clinic, but we had people running it and uh, Rosie's a nurse and she used to, uh, she used to head up the weight loss clinic. And uh, we laughed because we used to, you know, they, if we'd say you're cheating because we'd put them on this, 
30-day program, and uh, you know, sometimes a woman, especially, gain a pound or two, and of course they're mad at me. I say, you know, really <laughs> say, oh, you're cheating. What do you do? No, I'm I'm following. I eggs, eggs, meat, and cheese. Are you drinking wine? No. So I love my wine after work, and I gotta have. I said, well, that goes directly to your liver, and just like sugar, it's gonna turn to fat. So, but am I saying you can't do it? If you're going to do a 30 day program to sort of reset your body, I would recommend you don't use any alcohol for 30 days. But I'm not, I'm not telling you not to use it. I'm just telling you alcohol, you see, oh, uh, let me just say one more thing and I'll take all your questions. Okay, one more thing. The worst thing that happened in this and this, we changed sugars. 1982, okay, 1982, the food industry, remember the addiction industry, they created a sugar in a lab called high fructose corn syrup. It sounds good, high fructose, like fruit, sugar, right? But you see, it's a liquid sugar. And that in nanoseconds goes to your liver. It's, it's alcohol on steroids. And if you drink a Pepsi today or any, you look at, there's 92 names for sugars. If you look at labels, it says this sugar, that sugar, this sugar. It's this. It's uh, high fructose corn syrup. It's cheap. It's addictive. And uh, I was screaming in the 80s about that sugar. Don't give it to kids, and because it'll destroy their health. But did I win? No, of course not. But uh, that's a big thing. So just remember that that 200 pounds that we're up to today, kids and you maybe. Uh, you don't think of it because you're not measuring. Uh, but it's in it, it's in the form. A lot of it's in the form of that high fructose corn syrup which is, uh, I call it the antichrist of sugars. It's the worst sugar in the world because it's worse than alcohol. You might as well give your kid a beer. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it'll go directly to their liver and it don't pass cold. It doesn't go through the digestive tract. It's terrible stuff, terrible stuff. Uh, any other uh, questions? Yes, dear. What do you suggest if you're gonna be out in the sun for hours if we're not wearing sunscreen? Well, cover up. Okay. Like, you know, like I tell people, look, don't burn in the sun, put a hat on and, uh, you know, maybe a long sleeve light, you know, they make them today, right? Sure. The sun shirts that you could use and that, uh, yeah. And it's hard with kids, they can, you know, my grandchildren came down from Canada. They said, they haven't seen the sun in eight months, <laughs> right? They come down, they want to go to the beach with grandpa and grandma. You know, and we're trying to cover them up and they want to be in the water. Ah, you know, that's a lot easier, right? But look, for every person that would ever die from the sun, skin cancer, uh, you'd have about 250 dying from a lack of vitamin D. Right. You just don't understand the importance of vitamin D, and especially as you get older. Okay? Get your vitamin D, it should be above 60. Get it above 60 and your risk of getting cancer down by 80%. I write that in my new book. You should see the research on it. And the other one too, I didn't mention, and uh, Marine, thank you for mentioning it. I think it was you. B12. Because get your B12 done, because that's a very important biomarker in your body. 80% of the population are low in B12. Remember, if you're my age, Remember the doctors they used to give you B12 shots? Yes, yes. And uh, they were right. My dad lived dad on, uh, 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 with uh, B12. You're tired? Hey. Yep. Come on. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, and that needle would be in your arm so fast, make your head spin. And Rosie, being a nurse, she gave up tens of thousands of B12 shots in, uh, in her early days of nursing. They just don't do it anymore. They almost have to pull their teeth. You yeah. have to have pernicious anemia before they give you a B12. But today, if you are anywhere over 65 years old, 
what are your supplements should be B12? Take vitamin D as a supplement. If you're not gonna get in the sun three or four days a week, take vitamin D, take it as a supplement, get your blood work done, get over 60. B12, get to 800 to 1200 in your blood work. Because if you don't get there, you are at serious risk. B12 is a brain. <coughs> When I saw people, with not only with depression, but with uh, early dementia, invariably their B12 was down uh, sinking. So get your numbers up to about 800 to 1200. I like 1200. Yes, dear. So I just started juicing. <laughs> not good. Carrot <laughs> juice? No. I wouldn't do it. Now look. I'll tell you what. No, I, I okay. Carrots. <clears throat> okay. The problem is okay with juice. Is like that. Okay. I I would much rather you eat those carrots. Carrots are good for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now listen to this. Okay. About carrots. Mommy used to tell us eat our carrots for what. I tried that. He wasn't telling the truth. <laughs> no, carrots are good for your eyes because they got beta carotene, right? Yeah. But beta carotene is a precursor. Okay, you only have to learn uh, nutrition quickly to know the real thing for your eyes is vitamin A. And you get vitamin A by eating vitamin S, which is steak and eggs little bit of cheese. So coming back to your juicing, I wouldn't do it. I'll tell you why. Because your body's not me meant to, to... Now, carrots are not... Yeah, they're sweet to some extent in terms of a vegetable, but it's not the end of the world. But you were meant to eat that carrot and not drink it. And this stuff about cleansing, you know how you cleanse? Here's how you cleanse. Lay off sugar and your body will cleanse itself. If you sleep, your brain has a self-cleaning oven. It only works when you sleep. It's called your lymphatic system. So that's why I call it sun steak and sleep. <coughs> sleep. But I wouldn't juice. I'm not big on that. You can smoothie though. I like smoothie. I call it Dr. Martin's Perfect Smoothie. Give it to your kids and grandchildren. Protein, protein, protein. What's the king of the castle? Protein and fat. What's the dirty rascal? Carbs and sugars, right? So I wouldn't do it. And the other reason I wouldn't do it is because of oxalates. Oxalates um, is a glass-like substance. And when you drink uh, a juice, that is a, a vegetable juice, you're making lots and lots of oxalates. And that is very hard on your kidneys. <coughs> so I wouldn't do it. And kidneys is how you detox. Yeah. So, you know, is it going to kill you? No. Is it going to help you? So you said to cut down on the fruit in the steak, some and whatever. Eggs. Eggs. So <coughs> how much fruit are you allowed? How much? <laughs> well, don't, li don't live on it. It's, a, it's I, like I say, I call them God's candies. So, uh, you know, when you give your grandchildren some candies, you say, yeah, we're not gonna have a lot of it because they're candies. Now these are, these are they're like blueberries, or raspberries, strawberries, uh, you know, but an apple a day don't keep the doctor away. What keeps the doctor away is when you stay away from sugar. <coughs> it, 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 guys, I know I sound, rep it's all repetition. And I've been doing this for, uh, too long and uh, I never change it's always the same you ask anybody that's followed me I've been talking about sugar and saying that's the bad guy for so long because like I said it goes back to 1968 with my dad sugar diabetes and people today 93% of the population are diabetics without knowing it that's all they just don't know it yet um, let me, yes, what do you think about like monk fruit as a sweetener? Or, like, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> sure. uh, you know, I, I, I always do that because <laughs> why do you gotta have sweets? That's what I used to say on the radio. Right? 
Why? You have to have something sweet. Uh, but yeah, you can have some monk fruit. It's, it, you know, out of the sort of um, natural sweeteners, I would put monk fruit in amongst the top. You just saw something. Maybe you guys saw it, maybe you didn't. It was in the news about erythritol. Did you see that? That's a sugar alcohol. I actually made the headlines. Uh, that it, it causes heart disease. That's a bunch of nonsense. Like, I read the study, it was stupid. But I don't like it anyway. I, I'm not big on uh, substance. Like, I tell my patients, it takes three weeks to form a habit. 21 days. You want to form a habit? 21 days. I took enough psychology in university to be dangerous. That's what I learned. That's what I come up with. 21 days, you got to have it. Okay? So 21 days, you want to lose your sweet tooth? Give yourself 21 days. Wow. And, and you know, I used to have people, especially men, I always pick on them. I want you drinking more water. Your, your blood is as thick as molasses. I used to show them their blood work. I said, you're gonna have a heart attack. You're dehydrated. And they look at me, I don't like water. I said, I didn't say you had to like it. I want you to drink it. And you're gonna drink two liters a day? or 64 ounces, yep. measure it. And the white say, good. I've been telling them that for so long, and they, you never listen to me. You listen to Dr. Martin. Yeah, because I said, you're gonna have a heart attack from dehydration. That's one of the leading causes of heart disease. Okay, so what did you ask me again? <laughs> oh, well, okay. No, but you know what I tell people? Get used to not having sugar. And like I said, if you can do that 30-day program, what a difference that makes. People are just, they can't get over it. And of course, they get the good news on the blood work, but they can't get over how much better they feel when they cut that up. But monk fruit, yeah, you can have some of that. That's not going to hurt you. Yeah. What about nuts? And, you know, the are you a chipmunk? <laughs> <laughs> are you a squirrel? Well, that that's who they're made for. <laughs> no, but seriously, okay? Like, I used to tell people, look, look, you can have some, okay? You can, okay? Like, I'm, you know me, I'm over the top. But I always tell people, look, especially when you're looking at losing weight, okay? You want, you know, a lot of people, they, they, they do a program because they want to lose weight. I said, well, don't eat nuts. That's a, that, like, bears eat fruit to get fat. Huh. Why? Fructose. Remember? High fructose corn syrup. Think about it. What does it do? <coughs> to your liver. And, it, and then when the liver is full, it packs, packs, packs fat on. That's how your body operates. Just like a bear. So why would you want to eat a lot of fruit? Don't eat a lot of fruit. Bears eat a lot of fruit before they go to sleep. Or, I don't know, how many months they go to sleep? For? Yeah, a long time. <laughs> Nuts is what chipmunks and squirrels, they spend all summer, not in Florida, yep. but they get ready for winter. How do they do that? They put away their nuts for the winter. That's what they do. You watch. They're, they're so smart. They work like dogs all summer, and then they, and then they put, but that's what stores fat if you are eating too much nuts. So look, I'm not saying there isn't protein in there and whatever, but I just find people get a habit and then they, they're mad at me because they're not losing weight. I says, so you're ah. saying it's the wrong kind of fat. What's that? Nuts, if you're saying to eat steak and cheese and whatever, and you're saying how the Inuits ate the fat and not the meat, then you're saying that nuts have the wrong kind of fat. Exactly what, what I'm want. saying. Okay, because nuts, and look, I love peanut butter, okay? I didn't say it was good for you, I just like it, okay? But all I'm saying is, that is a different fat, okay? Because what you want, okay, and I didn't get into it, what you want is omega-3, okay? Everybody knows what omega-3 is, fish. You know what's got more omega-3 than fish? Steak. <laughs> People don't see the oil in steak. They see it in an oily fish, but they don't see it in the steak. But that's got more omega-3 DHA, which is the best of the fats. But nuts have omega-6, okay, generally. They're a little bit omega-3, but it's mostly omega-6. The problem is today, you know what we're eating today? 30 times 
more omega-6 than omega-3. That creates inflammation. So when you go to the grocery store, look at all those foods in the middle aisle. They're made with what they call seed oil, vegetable oil. You know, canola, mm -hmm. soy, rapeseed, grapeseed. Peanut those oil. are terrible oils. But that's what preserves the food, right? Remember Procter & Gamble? You remember Crisco? They started it all. That was a bad electric. Because Crisco is made for your car, not for you. Okay? Use it in your car. Turn it to oil, and it would be actually good for your car. Um, question. I think I have a melanoma board on my back. Now, is that because I don't have quite enough sun from my arms or the face, or is it because I don't put any sun on my well, maybe the blood maybe both things. Okay. Maybe both things. It's a good question. Are you think it's melanoma or are you? I think it's melanoma. Okay, but it could be squamous. Yep. Right. Yeah. Right. I've, I've had it. Then yes. And how how long has it been sitting there? Oh, years. Well, it ain't melanoma. <laughs> okay, good. One hundred percent. All right. Thank You'd you. be dead by now. Don't send me a joke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a basal cell. Okay. And. You know, do you get it removed or not? No, no, I don't think so. Okay. Melanoma, you're dead. I started thinking along the two days to X, but now I have three. What about with all the baking the nitrates? I knew someone was going to ask me about nitrates. You know what nitrates are? You hear about that. Have you heard that? What nitrates? Don't eat bacon because it's full of nitrates. That's celery powder. Oh, okay. Well, that's how they make it. Right. You know why they use salt in the Bible? Yeah. Why did they use salt? Preservative. Preservative. That's all they're doing with. You know when you get cured meat, you go to the deli and they tell you that's no good for you because it's full of nitrates? That's garbage. That's so stupid. It's salt. But again, see? They want to blame salt, and that's celery salt. That's how they make it. That's how you make nitrates with celery salt. How can that be bad for you? It's not bad for you. It's good for you. Part B is why Himalayan salt? Well, I like Himalayan because it's uh, it's uh, it's got 84 minerals in it. Now, a good uh, sea salt, a good um, sea salt too, is very very good. Don't get table salt because it's not salt. It's sodium chloride. Okay, it's, it, 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 it's been stripped of all its minerals. But in here, I've got uh, salt in here. You didn't know that, you can't see it. But you saw it a little cloudy? Because I put salt in. And, uh, but that brings up the, you know, don't go to the store and buy, by the way, who ever thought that you and I would buy water? <laughs> if you're my age. Are you kidding? My sports drink was drinking out of a hose when I was a kid. Okay. Something on the Himalayan salt, in case everybody's interested. It's expensive can be to buy, but if you go to the dollar store, you can buy a big pack for a dollar. That is a real good salt. 84 minerals in it. They're very, very good. We said it takes only Three weeks to start to do Why do we have to do 30 days? Yeah. Well, 30 days is to get rid of insulin resistance. Okay. Okay, so I, 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 I would tell my patients if they were in my office, their biggest problem was they're on the Titanic. So three weeks was to form habits, and they would. Okay. And they realize how much they really, uh, uh, you know, like water that they never drank before, or they. <laughs> They like uh, eating eggs and nobody, you know, there's no limit to them. They, they formed all sorts of new habits. But uh, it takes 30 days, I found in my um, uh, experience, 30 days to um, get rid of insulin resistance. Okay, so what that is, let me just show you this. And just so, okay. So at your cellular level, 
Okay? Here's your cells, okay? And there's your nucleus, and these are your mitochondria, whatever. When you're eating carbs all the time, your cells, okay, they develop almost like a coating. So your heart cells, your muscle cells, your all your organ cells or whatever, they, they develop a coating and they resist. the. See, insulin is like a key. It comes to open the door to allow sugar to come inside the cell, okay? That's, remember, that's what, what they're trying to do. Insulin is a storing hormone. It's always storing, primarily in the liver, but they'll store it in your muscle, they'll store it in your fat cells, but they're trying to open the door. Insulin resistance is that. To change that at the cellular level takes 30 days of no sugar. 30 days, you will change it at the cellular level. Yes, sir. I've been uh, diagnosed with uh, cataracts for two years. I'm Canadian. French-Canadian. Yeah. Oui, je parle aussi. From Sudbury. <laughs> um, my question is, uh, because of COVID, I haven't been able to get the surgery done for two and a half years now. I'm still waiting. But uh, I've noticed in the last year or so that my eyesight is getting better. Mm -hmm. You change your diet? Well, I pretty much eat uh, the healthy same. as much okay. as I can, but I, I've noticed my sight has been getting better. I don't wear my glasses. I used to wear them all the time now. Mm -hmm. I only need them for reading. I still have a bit of blue in my eyes. Yeah. Is it reversible? <coughs> Glaucoma? No. Uh, or cataracts. cataracts. Well, even cataracts. Cataracts is, you know what it is? Like, okay, what causes it? Yeah. it, it, it cataracts, it, eyes, it's all circulation. So when a, when a doctor goes in and he looks at your eye, of course he's looking at your pupil and your, your, your retina and that. But what he's really looking at is the back of the eye, the circulation. Because it's, it, it's like Highway 95, 595, and down here, you know, in, in South Florida, right? All the highways behind your eyes. Yeah. Sugar, sugar, what does it do? Destroys blood vessels. Okay? So, on the reset, 30 days, no sugar. Eyes, one of the biggest benefits are your eyes. Now, a cataract, sometimes they're too advanced or glaucoma, which is pressure on the eye. But pressure on the eye is circulation. It's all blood supply. Your kidneys, it's all blood supply. And what damages your blood supply is sugar. And anything that turns to sugar rapidly. So, whatever, if you're a good eater, keep eating good. With eyes, I there's a couple of things I recommend for people that, you know, high oil, like that uh, DHA I was talking about, I'm big on that. Because that really helps your, your blood vessels, keeps your blood vessels lubricated. And it's, it's possible to reverse it. I've seen it. Do you snack? What do you snack? Well, snacks is the word. Is what? That's the fruit. That's the food industry. Okay. Snacking came from the food industry. Okay. Are they on your side? No. No. Okay. There, is there a healthy snack? No. <laughs> because again, okay, if you understand the problem, if you're in that 93%, okay, unless you're in the 7%, but if you're in the 93 and you don't want to be there anymore, you don't want to snack. Because, look, I guess if you had a little pepperette or something, or an egg as a snack, it wouldn't be bad for you. Okay. But unless you have adrenal exhaustion, okay, and I used to treat that quite a bit, I never let people snap. But you know what? Yeah, you know what's happening today is very big. Today is is fasting. Yes. Right? You're hearing about it. There's a Canadian colleague, Dr. Fung, mm -hmm. right, who is a diabetic specialist who says fast, fast. I, I'm not that big on that, to be honest with you. I I, I don't I don't buy it as completely as he does, but I do like it in a sense that here's fasting. Eat three meals a day or two, okay? Don't eat if you're not hungry, 
and don't eat at night. That's the key. Don't eat at night. Let your body, your it's called autophagy or autophagy or all that. I don't know how you pronounce it. Doesn't matter. But your body has a self-cleaning oven. And when you turn that on is when you sleep. But if you eat, you're not sleeping. You, you're sedated, but you're not sleeping. Because your digestive tract is going crazy. Your pancreas and your, your you know, you eat at eight o'clock and you go to bed at 10. You're, especially if you eat this, think of what's happening inside your body. This is happening for six hours. You're not sleeping, you're sedated. Okay. And by the way, sleeping pills, you're not sleeping, you're sedated. The big difference, have you ever had surgery? They sedate you. Oh, I had surgery and I had never had a sleep like that in my life. No, you don't feel that good after surgery. When you take sleeping pills, you are not sleeping, you're sedated. Your self-cleaning oven does not work in your brain. So just remember that. And I tell people I know, I doc, if I don't take my sleeping pill, I don't sleep. Yeah, but you're not sleeping, you're sedated. It's a big difference. So I, 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 I feel sorry for them because I want you to sleep. You know what I mean? But don't, you got to get off the sleeping pill. Because with sleeping pills, 80% going to get Alzheimer's with that. Oh. Because your brain don't clean. They're, they're self-cleaning, nothing doesn't work. Uh, what about uh, dark leafy greens and uh, broccoli sprouts for salad? With for rabbits? <laughs> Are you a rabbit? <laughs> no, I'm an omnivore. <laughs> well, I'll tell you why I'm not that big on that, okay? Let me just tell you why. Cows eat grass, so you don't have to, okay? <laughs> Salad is grass. It's just glorified. <laughs> Kale, whatever. Uh, you know, no, but spinach or whatever, okay? I tell people, look, you have it, your cows have four stomachs to eat salad. You have one. You do not make cellulose, okay? You, 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 uh, excuse me, cellulase. You're, you don't have it. Your body doesn't make it. A rabbit has it. So a rabbit is meant to eat salad. You're not. Okay? You're meant to eat meat. Can I prove it to you? God gave you a gallbladder. What's a gallbladder? Fat. Right? It holds on to bile. Use it or lose it. You know why today? A half of the women population, just about 30 to 40 percent, have lost their gallbladder. Why? Hormones a little bit, okay, progesterone, lack of it. But the, the big thing is because women have bought the lie that fat makes you fat. So they ate fat free for years and their gallbladder filled up with stones because of not using bile. See, it's a little reservoir. It does this. When you eat a steak, your gallbladder does this. It empties the bile into your small intestine to absorb. You're meant to eat steak, not salad. Now, am I saying you can't have it? No. But is it good for you? No, it's not. Because you're not meant to eat it. Salad is, is it's, it's grass. You're not a cow. You don't have four stomachs. You have a gallbladder. That is for fat. You're meant to eat protein and fat, not salad. So, again, people, that doesn't make me popular, but I'm telling you the truth. You don't even have the enzymes to break down a salad. And when people get diverticulosis, I, I, I saw tens of thousands of, of mostly women with digestive problems. Big time digestive problems. Bloated, SIBO, diverticulosis, diverticulitis, constipated, and all they could think of, I got to get fiber. Fiber, fiber, brought to you by Dr. Kellogg's. You see, he invented it. Cereal, fiber, can't live without fiber. It lowers your cholesterol. Yes, it does. Why do you want to lower your cholesterol? Yeah. So look, I know I sound out there, 
But I used to get women, you got digestive problems, get off salad, don't have another salad. Because when you want, you eat spinach, where does it get caught? In your teeth? You're, you're talking to somebody, you got spinach right there. And uh, that's what happens, you get caught in your gut too. And you're not meant to because you can't break it down. You don't break salad down. Okay, now you're mad at me. No, I was going to ask you one about the gut bacteria that breaks down cellulose. Ah, I knew you were going to ask that. I was a biochemistry you're thinking major. The best gut bacteria to, to, for your microbiome is vitamin S. You want butyrate. Butyrate is the best feed you can give your bacteria. Okay? That's the new thing in medicine today, by the way, is bacteria. Okay? And the best food for your gut is steak. Is what? Steak. And, and let me just say one more thing about steak. One of the leading medications, number one, I told you, was Lipitor. But in the top five are PPIs. You know what those are? Those are proton pump inhibitors, okay? Acid reflux. From Tums to the purple pill. Prilosec and all those. Those are major drugs today. Why? Because we're carboholics. Your stomach has a pH of, should have a pH between 1 and 1.5. A cow is 4. Why? They're eating salad. They're having grass. When you have grass, you don't need a, a you don't need an acidic, acidic stomach. But when you, you're a human being, you're meant to eat meat. And your stomach is made to eat meat. And that's why when you have acid reflux, it's because you're a carboholic and your stomach was is now the pH has gone up to about two, two point five to three. And guess what? Now your your body says, Hey, that's you're you're too alkaline. I gotta make you acidic. So those proton pumps start secreting acid. The problem with that is it starts going up your esophagus and you got heartburn or silent reflux which is a major problem today. Why? Or carbohydrates, that's why. It's sugar that destroys your stomach, not steak. Steak is the best food in the world. Liver is higher, but I don't like liver. So steak, okay? What about fish? What kind of fish? Fish? 100%, all of them. All the fish, all the fish in the world. I don't like fish, so I don't talk about it much. Okay? I only talk about what I like, or I don't. But I love fish, but I take it every day in a capsule. And do I like vodka? Oh, well, of course I do. I do. How do you know I don't have it in here? Okay? No, but fish is very good for you. Very good for you. But steak is better. Steak is better. On the 38 cleanse of the meat, eggs, and cheese, is bone broth acceptable? Yes. And what about, I don't know, Breville, even sourdough? Uh, I like it. I just have heard it's like fermented, like it's better. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the wine. It turns to wine sugar in nanoseconds. Okay. okay? Yeah, fermented, who cares? It don't matter. You know, Jesus ate that bread, but you know what? Like, the, you, you have to look at the statistics. It's we're up to 200 pounds of sugar. So you can't add more. It's just the way where it is. My whole message in the last 40 years has been screaming about that. It's worse than ever. Yes? Oh. Um, so I wanted to kind of say, I know somebody asked something about like snacking. Um, as someone who went through the reset, usually when you're eating more uh, protein dense foods like um, meat and cheese and eggs, you don't actually find yourself as hungry. Like you're not really going to want to snack as much because the protein lasts a lot longer. It's just more substantial food or as Dr. Martin would say, jet fuel. Yeah. So um, it kind of lasts a lot longer. You'll find yourself not as hungry and just kind of being able to subsist off of those meals that you're having. Yeah. So snacks just aren't as necessary. Yeah, and I use the illustration perfect. Like when you have a car, okay? You're, you're, you're trying to heat your, your log cabin with paper and twigs in your wood stove. You don't heat your, your log cabin in a wood stove with paper. You start a fire with it, but it won't last. So snacking, when you're eating high octane, or if you have eggs, meat, cheese, because they're so full of nutrients, 
very high in protein and healthy fat, <clears throat> your cells are full. Your mitochondria, remember I showed you the mitochondria there? Mm -hmm. Like this is a big thing going on in medicine, by the way, too. Um, they're starting to realize this is really important in the body, okay? Are these guys, your mitochondria, right? You learned that in high school or maybe even grade school. Your mitochondria is your battery pack and it's all based on food. So if you are eating the right things, you are producing the right energy. Go to the, uh, go to Fort Lauderdale today, you go down the road, go to the, uh, the uh, jets. Do you think those trucks that come up and fill them up are using 87 that you use, 87 octane that you can use in your car today? Or even 88 or whatever? No, no, they're using jet fuel and jet fuel is 99% octane. And that's what aged meat and cheese are. <clears throat> so when your body sees aged meat and cheese come down, I mean, forget the fact that your pancreas doesn't have to secrete insulin, which is a huge problem, but your cells, the mitochondria are going, holy moly, I got 100% octane. Not paper and twigs, not 87 octane, you won't need to snack as much. Snacking was made up by the food industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they did it, they, you know, give them credit. They, they, they're marketers, they, oh, yeah. you know, you need to snack. And you go to dietitians. I have to teach them postgraduate. Snacking is the worst thing you can do because now you're six, eight times a day, you're telling your pancreas to secrete insulin. You're compounding the problem uh, in society today, which is heart disease, cancer, <clears throat> Alzheimer's, and diabetes, and autoimmune. I didn't even talk to you about that. Autoimmune today is like this. It is on that graph. It's unbelievable, autoimmune. Now, it's not all food, but 90% of it is inflammation because you're using your body who wasn't meant to be you're doing you're eating the wrong food and too often you will never get a heart attack if you eat eggs i don't care if you have 200 it doesn't happen because you're all you're going to do is elevate your cholesterol and you want to elevate your cholesterol because cholesterol will save you because they will hitch their wagon to triglycerides and take them back to the liver for processing. Uh, that is nutrition, really, it's biology uh, 101, but they don't teach it anymore. They don't teach it in medical school. My son-in-law is an emergency physician, and he said, Dad, I didn't even take one hour of what you're talking about. Right. So I just didn't take it. Be smart. You have a heart attack. Don't call me. I ain't gonna help you. I want to help you before you have. Yeah. But if you have a heart attack, you want to see my son-in-law. I mean, he's an emergency. One eight hundred Sam. That's what I call. I said, man, oh man, you get hit by a bus, you want Sam. You don't want me. I don't know what to do with a bus, but I know what to do with food. It works. Gary. We talked about snacking. <coughs> the opposite of that would be fasting. Benefits of fasting, many fasts. Well, I like that. Yes, I, I look. I've written, I don't know how many newsletters and whatever on fasting. Do I like it? Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, when you're on the Titanic, Gary, not you, you're on. But when you're on the Titanic, I always tell people, let's not worry about the deck chairs right now. We'll, we'll worry about the furniture after. Let's change course. So I'm a big picture guy. So I don't introduce fasting to them right away because if I do that, I get, uh, I, I, I'm gonna be hungry. I, I'm a carboholic. My name is Tony and I'm a carboholic. Help, help, help. Okay. 
I don't talk to them about fasting right away because I, I don't want that in their life. I just want them to change course, change food. I want you to eat. I want you to eat lots of the right thing. Okay, can you do it? Yep. Make yourself an omelet with 10 eggs. I don't care. Put bacon, put sausage, put whatever. Have a steak every night, Bring have a hamburger, <laughs> leave the bun alone. Okay, that's me. So what I'm saying is this. Fasting I like, but I'm more into intermittent fasting, meaning that the best way to fast of your body, and I've proven it to people, is stop eating six o'clock at night, earlier if you can, and go all the way till, uh, well, six is 12 hours. Why don't you go past it? Go to eight, now you're at 14, okay? Have a coffee. You give me a coffee in the morning, I'm a happy puppy. I mean it, because that's me. When I get up in the morning, this is me. I have one of these. Every day, seven days a week. Because I know what my body needs, and so does yours. Drink water, make your coffee. Get it ready, because I gotta have coffee. But I have my water first, and then I have my coffee. So, uh, coming back to fasting, if you do that, go six o'clock in the morning, especially, if you're eating the right foods, your your insulin, your brain, your self-cleaning oven, everything is working. You come and you come in the morning and it's six o'clock in the morning and you might not even be up yet, but you're fasting. And then you're eight o'clock, you're at 14 hours. And even Dr. Fung, who is the, the guru <coughs> of fasting, said that's fasting. Now, if you can go to 10, hallelujah, even better. But I tell people, look, if you eat eggs, meat, and cheese, you're fasting without fasting. Why? Because of that, I was showing you this. Because when your body gets the right fuel, you're really, your body is, is burning ATP, which is the fuel your body burns, it's so high in octane, there's so little debris, there's so little toxins. You see, when you eat carbs, you know why you have a big poop? I gross people up. I said, you don't get a prize for having a big poop. If you eat a lot of fiber, and a lot of cereal, and a lot of carbs, you're gonna have big poops. But what, do you get a prize? What does that do? That just shows you how much how much garbage is in those foods. You're pooing it out. It's going into the toilet. What good is that? You see, when you eat eggs, meat, and cheese, you're going to have little poops. Why are you going to have little and, and women are calling me. Women are the worst for that. Dr. Martin, I'm constipated. Why are you constipated? Well, I didn't go to the bathroom three times today. I'm used to going three times. I said, you're a carbolic. And when you're a carbaholic, you're going to have big poop. Why do you want to have a big poop part? You want to have a little poop. So when you don't have any debris, you're only going to have a little poop. But that's not constipation. That's how your body is meant to operate. Okay? I know. I grow still. Yes, dear. My question is talking about snacking a little bit. Um, a lot of people chew gum in order not to snack or they chew on things, and that gets your saliva and everything working. Is that detrimental to what you're after? Well, look, to some extent, okay, and I've seen a lot of research on this, to some extent, you're setting off a little bit of a, an insulin response. It's not big, but you're still sending, you know, it, 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 it's not fasting, if, if, you know what I mean? So look, you're better off if that helps you, especially during the 30 days, I don't care. I just want you to win. So if that's what helps people, you get a little bit of insulin, but not much. And that's my key, my key is insulin. So 
I'm doing everything I can to lower it, right? So if it takes you chewing some gum instead of eating a carbohydrate, go for it. But it, it does cause a little bit of a, a response from anything that I've seen. And then if you got um, what they flavor the gum with, or like the artificial sugars or the xylitol or whatever, yeah, there's sugar alcohols and you know for me that sort of affects your microbiome your bacteria and your gut a little bit so I'd be careful with that but hey I'm a big picture guy I do big picture then I then I you know it's like people duck do I gotta eat organic uh, if you can afford it uh, good for you but you know what I mean like I'm big picture so if you can get a, a you know a better piece of meat than you know than a bologna, um, I guess. But bologna is better than a chocolate bar, so that's the way I look at it. I just have a, a couple of, of comments. First of all, the deal about uh, smoking. We used to all smoke and it was part of our lives. And a lot of us, when we finished. Uh, a meal, we had a cigarette. Yep. Then years later, when we finished a meal and we weren't smokers anymore, we had a dessert. Yeah. <laughs> so we kind of substituted for that. But the thing that I keep picturing is your plate. Your plate of steak, cheese, and egg. And when you pass the 30 days, put some vegetables on. Okay, so don't live on it. That's all, all right. I tell people. So that's don't live what on I was it. going to say. Tell me what kind. You can of have vegetable. some carrots. Okay. You can have. I look. Cooked if you want to know what beans. a big potato does, or mashed potatoes, or you know whatever, I mean they spike your insulin through the roof. Okay, yeah, like right. don't fool yourself. Uh, you know, a sweet potato is probably the best. But don't fool yourself. If you're, again, it depends where you're at, but once you've done that 30 days and your blood work is now where it should be and you're on the right path, you know, just understand that, you know, it's like I said about diabetes. You never cure a diabetic. Diabetic, You put them into remission, but you don't cure it. So if, if I'm a carboholic, I just understand that I have a bad relationship with carbs. So, mm, I'm careful. Now, there are better carbs, obviously, like vegetables, for yeah, example. what kind of cooked vegetables? Oh, yeah, well, you know, like asparagus, or what do, what do you like? Asparagus, you know? green beans. Green beans, or, yeah. yeah. How about types of beans in general? Like mm, well, there are a lot of lectins in there. I talk about that in my book. I, you know, look, I mean, again, that, and you meet that. Okay, that makes sense. That, your vegetables. Wanna have salad, ladies? You can have a salad. And have Caesar salad if you want. I don't care. Chicken and salad. I don't care. But lots of meat. Lots did you of protein. Bring any of your lots books? of that. What's that? Did you bring any of your books? I you? did not. I'll tell you why. They're not <coughs> ready yet. Okay? I can show you a picture of the cover. It's ready to go. I did my job. The publisher, it's they're still backed up from COVID. What is the steel? What is the steel? Steel is oh, wait, lady, get strong. One of the biggest killers in society today is sarcopenia. You know what that is? Muscle wasting. Okay, and again, diet and the lack of exercise are the wrong. Look, you can walk, just move. I agree with that. But what they're showing now, and the research is so clear, the stronger you get. Okay, women, they don't like this as much. Okay, but the stronger you get, the, mo the most <coughs> metabolically what you can do for yourself is have muscle. Because muscle is a metabolic tool that your body uses to lower insulin. 
So your body has a built-in producing insulin, pancreas, and your body has a built-in uh, muscle to lower insulin response. The more muscle you have, the better it is. And again, movement is good. You want to walk, I love walking, whatever. You want to swim, you want to, but muscle is the key. That's why I call it sun, stick, and steel. So ladies, take out a band even, okay? And you don't need a gym. If you don't have a gym, who cares? You can put it around a post out there and pull on the band and get strong, get your back strong. You know what the best metabolic thing is for your insulin? Are your legs. These legs, here's what they've shown. Strong legs, brain damage. Because this has a direct relationship, this here has a direct relationship to uh, sugar in the brain. Well, yeah, well then get strong here. Look at that. Marie, you're scaring me with that. How do you get that in this country? That's why I tell my grandchildren, I say, you see, Grandpa, I couldn't get in with these, with these guns. Okay, we couldn't get it. See, I need a special Biden wouldn't let me in. So, you guys don't get the joke. Okay, guys, okay, I, I don't mind. Who, who would want to ask me a question? Yes, sir, and I'll come back to you. I have two questions. One is, is aspartame so much worse than high glucose? Uh, corn syrup? No, it's not worse. It's not worse. It's bad, but it's not worse. There's nothing like high fructose corn syrup. That's the worst, okay. Because aspartame, you know, I people ask me that in the 70s. Okay, about aspartame. And I said, well, they haven't, I haven't seen the research yet, but I said, I can tell you it's probably not going to be good. And uh, what they're finding is aspartame is really hard on your microbiome. So this here, right? Not, not digestively as much, but the microbiome is connected to your brain. And, anyway, it's not good. But uh, no, high fructose corn syrup would be a hundred times worse because of the insulin. Second. Second question is vegetarians or vegetarian animals have flat teeth like we have, and animals are supposed to eat meat have very sharp teeth. So are we really supposed to be eating meat all the time or not? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Anyway, even though we have flat teeth. We don't have all flat teeth. Like the dinosaurs. The flat teeth dinosaurs. Now talk to my dentist friend. I'll tell you, the carnivore. Don't be a carnivore. I'm not. I'm not saying to be a carnivore. i You know what I tell people? I'm a nutrivore. You give me nutrition, I'll tell you what's in it. Tell me a food, I'll tell you what's in it. And you can't beat a piece of steak. You can't beat, there's no B12 in chicken, even. It, it, you know, I, I, I'm not a believer. So if God didn't want you to, to eat meat, red meat, why is it only found? Why is B12 only found in red meat? It's only found in red meat. It's not in anything. Brewer's yeast has a little bit, that B vitamin, but specifically B12. It's not in the plant kingdom. So an essential vitamin, can't live, but you, you will not do well without B12. It's only found in state. But better eat it. Lamb, of course, lamb's fantastic. I just don't like lamb, so I don't talk about it. One question, is there a blood type that we will miss when we send it to you if we just ask our GP? Is it all the information? Oh, well, look, that's why I'm saying, like a lot of times, make sure, you got. You know how the pharmaceutical industry operates, right? Ask your doctor if this is good for me. You don't have to ask your doctor, right? Your doctor should know. But anyway, they're marketing geniuses. Do you think they're stupid? They're not stupid. Ask your doctor. But for blood test, ask your doctor. And say, look, I'm interested. I want to know my A1C. Because a lot of doctors will go, you don't need to know that. I'm going to check your blood sugar. You don't need to know A1C. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Because you want to know what your insulin is. And secondly, you want to know what your triglycerides. See, doctors, you might not always get your lipid test done. Because he's not thinking about that. But you make sure. B12, vitamin D, even if you have to pay for it, I don't know what your health plan is, you pay for vitamin D, it's worth your money. If you have it.
Oh, oh, make it three. Yeah, get your own make it three level stuff. Uh, can we eat, in your diet, can we also eat rice and beans and all of that kind of stuff? On the 30 day or after? Uh, 30 days. Nope. No. But what about after? Limited. Lemonade? Lemonade. Is it the rice? Limited. You only see me eat white. Okay, doesn't mean you can't have it. Okay? But make them treats. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm showing you the plate. Meat, eggs, and cheese. A little bit of this on the edges. Okay. And you can survive. I know, I know that some of you uh, need to go. You probably have things to do, but but anyway, I've told you that uh, Dr. Martin would be interesting, and I hope that he's here.